Well, good morning again, everyone. Good morning. We've been on a series the last month on holiness. And uh, what was the, the title of our series? The Most Holy Place. And uh, if you haven't listened to any of the messages in this series, please go back. We have a podcast that's on all platforms. Um, iTunes, Google Play, there's a podcast website, you can go back and listen to them. Um, all of our messages are on our YouTube channel as well, so you can go on YouTube, type in Lifeway uh, Church AG, and you'll be directed to our YouTube channel, and then Facebook as well. All of our lives are archived on our Facebook page, so please go back. If you missed any of them, this is our fourth message in our Holiness series. If you missed any of these messages, please go back and listen to them, because they've all been uh, just so amazing. And just the Holy Spirit's bringing us into a deeper understanding of true holiness. And last week, so we kind of, we're kind of doing a two-part message in this series. Uh, last week we talked about sanctification. And that's a very big kind of Christianese word, sanctification. What does that really mean? What does it look like? Uh, and so we kind of dove in last Sunday and began the conversation on what is sanctification? What does it mean to be sanctified? And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go back and review some of what we talked about last, last Sunday and go a little deeper into it, and then Leslie's going to follow up. Uh, but one of the kind of key scripture passages that we've been using for this series is, oh yeah, by the way, the title of our message today is Eagle Up. Where's Sean? Sean, where you at? Eagle Up! There we go. If you're going to say it, that's how it needs to be said. Okay. Well, one more time, Sean. There we go. Eagle up. And that kind of came out of last Sunday morning's message. So if you didn't get the listen, go on Facebook or YouTube and you'll be able to listen to a kind of more of what that means. We're going to go back and talk about it again. Uh, one of our Key scripture passages, 1 Corinthians 1 2, it's on the screen, it's now in the New Living Translation. This is Paul writing to the church of Corinth, and he says, I'm writing to God's church, like what you are at God's church. Yes. I'm writing to God's church of Corinth, to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, as he did for all people. Everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. He made you holy. It's a finished work accomplished by Jesus. You have been made holy. You are a holy nation, a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Sanctification, talked about this last Sunday. What in the world does that big word mean? What is it? Four syllables? Sanctification. Five syllables. That's hard for me. That's a lot of syllables in one word. Sanctification simply means this. Set apart. Or the result of being made holy. It's not a process. It's not a lifelong process of becoming holier and holier. And eventually, hopefully attaining Holiness in Christ Jesus. That's not what sanctification is. It's the result of being made holy. The church. Big C church. The church as a whole. The worldwide church. Jesus died to make the church holy. Jesus died to make Lifeway Church. And First Baptist. And New Point. And Legacy. And the Presbyterian Church. And the Brethren Church. And First United Methodist. All of our churches. Yes. Yeah. Holy in Jesus name. And guess what? We all know the church is not a building. The church is a company of men and women. You, individually, Jesus died so that you could be made holy and righteous and sanctified. We are His holy nation, 1 Peter 2, 9. Chosen people, sanctified in Christ. So, last Sunday, we talked about how the New Testament uses two Greek words for our English word sanctification. Now keep tracking with me here. I don't want to lose you because this is so important, so vital. This is why studying scripture is so important because so much 
can be lost in translation. And it's important to study different translations of Scripture. It's important to uh, read, you know, the, the footnotes and commentaries and... Um, what's that? Concordance, yeah. To, to dive into word studies and what it really truly is saying. And there are two Greek words for our one word, sanctification. So the first, we call it perfect sanctification, or the Greek word is adiazo. Everyone say adiazo. Adiazo. Now the next time you're filling out a job application, you can check that box that says bilingual because you now speak Greek. <laughs> Congratulations. Adiazo. Adiazo. So... Perfect sanctification. Now, now, this is the one we've been talking about a lot throughout this series. This is what it means. It means to separate from profane things and dedicate to God. Or to purify by expiation. That's a big word for atonement. Free from guilt of sin. To purify internally renewing of the soul. Okay. So... Adiazo, perfect sanctification, that big definition there you just read, this happens immediately at the moment of conversion. When you say, Jesus, I declare that you are the Lord of my life, and I believe that you rose from the dead, come into my life, and I will live for you forever. And immediately you are transformed. You step from darkness into the kingdom of light. You are redeemed, and you are fully sanctified. Adiazo, you have been purified, free from the guilt of sin. Your soul has been renewed. Your mind has been transformed. That is perfect sanctification. Immediately at the moment of conversion. We said this. It is not a lifelong process of becoming more and more holy. I used this example last week. When a baby is born, does that baby become more human and more human the longer it lives? No. No. It is fully equipped at the moment of birth with everything it needs biologically to grow, to mature. It does not become more and more human. It is fully human. The same happens when you are born again. It's why you're born again. You are born into righteousness. Into holiness. You are cleansed. You are purified. Immediately. That, we talk about miracle signs and wonders, church, that is the greatest miracle that you will ever experience, Amen. is salvation. Right. Perfect sanctification. We have been made holy by Jesus Christ and united with Him in one spirit. Who are we in Christ? Come on, tell me. Who are we in Christ? There's a lot, there's not a wrong answer here, there's a lot of them. Sons and daughters. Who else? Righteous. Righteousness. We are the righteousness of Christ. Yes. What else? Recreated. Recreated. What else? Bride. What? Bride. The bride. What else? Love. We are love. Priests. What else? Co-heirs. Co-heirs with Christ. Seated in heavenly places. What else? But as I said earlier, what are we in the kingdom? We are kings in the kingdom. I think he hit all that I had. All oh, brothers and sisters of Christ. You notice in the Gospels, we said this in a message a while ago, but Jesus never refers to his disciples as brothers until after the resurrection. Then they are his brothers. Okay, there's one that we haven't hit yet. Anybody want to take the last guess? Holy. holy. We're holy, yes. Set free from the power of sin. Set free from the power of sin. What what is if we are holy, what's another word that we are that needs holy? Sanctified. Sanctified. Somebody's Okay, so when Leslie and I we were in college together, and the president of our university, every time he would stand up on stage, we had chapel every day. So every time he would get up on the stage, it was 10 o'clock in the morning, he would greet all of us by saying, Saints. Good morning, Saints. Oh. And I thought, that's so weird. Why is he calling us Saints? <laughs> well, come to find out, the man with the PhD actually knew what he was talking about. <laughs> Do you know that you are called 
saints over 60 times in the New Testament. So, all right, Kim, you can now refer to Chuck as Saint Chuck. Scripture says one thing when actually it means a completely different thing. 
So, perfect sanctification, we talked about it. Now there is what is called practical sanctification, agiosmos. Still sanctification, but in another Greek word with a different definition, agiosmos is the living out aspect of our nature. It's the action to the already inward transformation. You can't have agiosmos without agiazo. You can't live sanctified without being sanctified. Right? So here's a better kind of definition for this. You are sanctified perfectly on the inside. Agiazo. So that you can live sanctified on the outside. Agiosmos. It's learning all kinds of Greek today. This is great. <laughs> All right, let's look at a couple of scriptures here where it's using agiosmos, the living out of our sanctification. Romans 6, 19, For just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, resulting in further lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, resulting in sanctification. Agiosmos, living it out. Why is this important? Well, if we switch these definitions in this verse, what happens? Righteousness resulting in sanctification, the perfected nature that we have in Jesus immediately at conversion. So if we read this wrong, we're going to spend our entire lives trying to strive for something that's already been done. Righteousness leads to righteousness, for holiness. Like so I, I have to live my whole life doing something, trying to attain to this level of holiness? No. That's not what Paul is saying here in Romans. He says, righteousness, your new nature in Christ, leads to living out righteousness. Yeah. Because you've been transformed, right? Actions speak louder than words, right? Let your actions reflect what's happening on the inside. Does that make sense? Yes. That's why it's so important to understand. Because if not, now you're bound to a life of works and striving and going back to the law. Because you're trying to make it happen on the inside when Jesus is the only one who can. And it's exhausting. Right, Wes? Yeah, me and him, we talk about this all the time. Oh, it's so liberating. Okay, let's look at another verse. Romans 6.22, so it's just a few verses later. But now that you have been set free from sin... Read that again. Now that you have been what? Set free. Set free from sin. Sin is no longer your master. You've been set free from the power and the penalty of sin. You do not have to obey its desires. It no longer dictates anything to you anymore. It is dead in the grave. Now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end to eternal life. Sanctification, the living it out. The fruit that we get as we surrender everything to Jesus, we live it out through the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's the fruit it's the display of what the Holy Spirit is doing on the inside. I heard it said this week, Chris Ballatin said, Stop praying for patience. Pray for love, because love is patient. Isn't that good? That's free. We have been perfectly sanctified when we receive Christ. Becoming new creations is not a process. Right, Kyle? Amen. Brand new. New creation is not a process. It's immediate transformation in Jesus. It's the finished work. You are holy because He is holy. As He is, so are you. Yeah. However, there is the process of growing in intimacy, maturity, and understanding. You're not growing in holiness. You are holy. There's not different levels. We already talked about that. But you can grow in your understanding. Because now you have the mind of Christ. 
And you can grow in maturity. You can grow in uh, understanding. And this helps you live out your sanctification. It's just like the baby. Go back to the baby. He's fully equipped. You, the moment you say, Jesus, yes, you are fully equipped. The Holy Spirit takes up residence inside of you. But there's still the process of discipleship and learning how to live out what's happened on the inside of me. That is agios most practical sanctification. I read this in our, in our studies in the NIV Bible Dictionary. Listen to this. It's on the screen. This is awesome. The ethical nature of holiness grows clearer as revelation unfolds. So what we just said, understanding, right? Until the holiness of God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, of the church as a body and of individual members of that body fills the New Testament horizon. The nature of holiness grows clearer as revelation unfolds until the holiness of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the entire church fills the New Testament horizon. Remember we said this comes, this living out your sanctification, Leslie's going to talk about this. It's birthed out of intimacy and rest, not out of striving. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Living it out, it's, it's, it's not a drag, it's not a daily, oh my goodness, I have to try to be better, I have to try to do better, I have to try to look better, I gotta try to sleep better, I gotta try to think better. No. He's the transformation. And it happens in intimacy, it happens in daily digging into the Word, in prayer, spending time with the Father, and the Holy Spirit does the work in you. Those sinful desires, they begin to fall off. You become a completely different person. You start to think differently, see people differently, speak differently. Like, what? Where did that come from? Or people around you, like, oh, dude, you sound different the last couple of weeks. What's going on? Right? Art, right. you're wearing an Ohio State shirt, man. What's going on? With you? Jesus going to be there so much, right? Yeah. <laughs> but living out our sanctification, it's not something we strive for. It's something the Holy Spirit empowers you to display, right? It's the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit of Travis. It's the fruit of the Spirit.
right? It's, it's creators, which we know who the real creator is, but you know how that happens. I'm not going to explain it to you. If you need more information, you can talk to Travis after the service. But when a baby is made, Not something I have to like earn. It's 
wars and are increasing. They keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are ever increasing, growing and maturing. I like the message version. It says, complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passionate patience. How many of you love passionate patience? Yes. <laughs> Reverent wonder, warm friendliness, and generous love. Yeah. With these qualities active and growing in your lives, no grass will grow under your feet. No day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience of our Master Jesus. How do I grow in godliness? How do I grow in beautiful, passionate patience, in love, experiencing Jesus on a daily basis? Come on. Jesus said it to his disciples when he was calling them. He said, follow me. I'm taking this from a session we were at in Synergy yesterday. He said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Yeah. Work really hard. Memorize, memorize, memorize. Know all the theology. Have a perfect grasp on everything before you can do anything. Come on, that's not what he said. He said, follow me. Being a Christian... We need to know this. Being a Christian, which Christian means little Christ, being a Christian means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Not a follower of Stephen Furtick, not a follower of Leslie and Travis, not a follower of Bethel, not a follower of any other famous person, not a follower of anything but Him. Yes. And I love this part, and as this was explained yesterday, I'm like, I'm using that. He said we could, but I'm using that. And, and it says,
forget where you stand. Yeah. The enemy wants you to forget who you are. Yeah. And go back to that sinful nature. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget your innocence gets paid for. You are forgiven. Oh, I love that so much. If you practice these qualities, you will never fall. That's, that's verse 10. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. Remember who you are. Remind yourself daily, I have the mind of Christ. I am renewed. I am free. I am healed. I am whole. Call to remembrance the cross and the victory of the grave. Come on. Call to remembrance that Jesus said that same power that raised him up out of the grave lives alive and thriving in you. Call to remembrance. Sean? In the <laughs> Get off the ground. Yes. Lift your head. Eat that meat. <laughs> that was not, you know, a push for not being a vegetarian. Okay. <laughs> Let's jump to verse 12 and 13 as we wrap it up. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities. Yeah. Though you know them, and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to stir up by way of reminder. That's what we're doing today. Yes. You may already know this. You may already be confident in this, but I'm going to stir it up in you one more time. Remember who you are. Remember because of who you are is Him. Yes. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? Yes. You see Him? So last week we read a story about Will the chicken turn eagle. How many of you heard that story? Okay, if you if you don't know about it, we'll, we'll tell you about it. But basically the story is this chicken read a letter. The letter said he could become an eagle, so he believed it. He became an eagle, but he stayed in the cage. And another eagle flew by and said, hey, you're an eagle, get out of the cage. Put on those wings. Okay, so we went home Sunday afternoon. That's a cool it's, it just eagle up, man. It just it took to our hearts. We are to soar on wings like eagles, but to rise and not faint. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. We had clouds right above Travis's head, shaped like an eagle soaring last Sunday. The Lord works with miracle signs and wonders. Keep your eyes open to his glory. Amen? Yeah. Not being weird. He loves to show us in crazy, cool ways his love for us. And this is how he sees you, church. Jen tagged us in an article. The article is titled, Time for the Eagles to Leave the Turkey Yard. Yeah. This article was written last Sunday. It's dated March 14th, 2021. I don't know Mario Morello personally, but he's a well-known prophet, and the Lord spoke to him last Sunday to write this down. And I want you to hear it. I want you to receive it. I want you to identify who you are. Okay? You ready? Yeah. Eagle up. Eagle up. Yes. Eagle up. Yeah. yeah. It is clear that as the madness spreads and the church just wrings its hands, it is time for the eagles to leave the turkey yard. Yes. You know who you are. You who are an eagle, there's a fire inside of you that you can't put out. Come on. Yes. You are run for church as usual incorporated. Yes. For too long, you've been told to be a good little birdie. Don't ruffle any feathers, but just can't stomach the stale kernels they toss to you anymore. You must have fresh meat. Yes. Come on. All around you, the turkeys peck at the ground. But all you can see are the clouds and the sky where you know you belong. You long to be home where the glory is. Your place is alongside the heroes of faith that change the course of nations. Survival mode teaching sickens you. Come on. The idea that tepid happiness is the goal enrages you. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. Life to the fullest. Woo. You made the mistake of looking at old YouTube videos of Oral Roberts and Catherine Coleman and Smith Wigglesworth. You jumped up and screamed, but where 
can say I've said that in the last year. Yeah. So now that you realize that the somebody is you, come on. It is, it is too late for you. The die is cast. You've gone too far to turn back. You know, you now know too much. You feel like you should leave before you hurt someone. You remember the first day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Prayer is your escape from the prison yard of compromise and mediocrity. We are not talking about the gobble gobble prayers you heard in the yard. We're talking about falling before God and waiting upon Him until you come forth as pure gold. Intimacy, identity, increase. Yes. What are we talking about? We are talking about prayer that can't res heaven can't resist and hell can't stand. Come on, somebody. The kind of prayer that breaks through ancient demonic strongholds in Jesus' name. Prayer that causes students to begin to weep on campus even though they do not know why. Prayer that fills people with the Holy Spirit. Prayer that removes fear and installs unshakable courage to tell a generation the genuine good. Jesus Christ. 